In this episode of the podcast, I'm going to give you a sneak peek into a handful of my very favorite quotes that are going to give you lots of inspiration and guidance for decluttering. You are listening to the Decluttering Club podcast. I'm your host, Sarah Mueller, and it's my mission to equip women to declutter their homes, their time, and their lives so that they can cherish what truly matters. You are listening to the Decluttering Club podcast, episode number 32. Today, I'm going to share with you seven of my favorite quotes to inspire decluttering. Are you ready? Let's go. All right, so if you have been in my community for a while, you probably have noticed that I love quotes. I adore reading. I read a ton of nonfiction, a little bit of fiction every now and then. And um, I just feel like when you read a great quote, you want to hang on to it. So maybe I'm a collector of quotes. You could think about it that way. But I just feel like there's so much wisdom. And frequently, um, you know, when you read something that's really well written, it just captures like the essence of an idea. And when I see something like that, when I learn something like that, I want to share it with you guys. Okay. So I have collected, uh, I believe six or seven of them, and I want to share them with you and walk you through what they are and why I think they're useful and important and valuable when it comes to decluttering. The interesting thing about these is that none of them are necessarily related to decluttering. Some of them are business ideas. Some of them are just psychology, uh, you know, and, and, and just related in general to the way we live. But none of them are specifically attuned to decluttering. And I love that because as far as I'm concerned, decluttering is life. When we are letting things go, we're making room. We are saying, yes, I have room for whatever is next. I have room to live. I have room for, you know, I have space to move and breathe in. So I don't think, I I don't ever want to limit ourselves to just thinking about how to let go of X, Y, Z, right? There's just so much that carries over from one area, you know, of, of the world to other areas. And I think we can learn so much when we look to other areas, uh, you know, other areas of expertise uh, for inspiration and motivation and guidance and wisdom. Okay. So that's why I like to pull from different types of books um, so that you can kind of look at things in a different way. Okay. My first quote is from an author called Garrett Gunderson, and the book is called Money Unmasked. And there's a lot of parallels between money and clutter. Okay. So this is, this one is super short and sweet. The game of more is unwinnable. If you are pursuing more, you're never going to have enough. And how many times has that happened for you? Because I know it happens for me all the time. You know, if I am like, oh, I don't have enough or, or let me add, you know, to my collection or wouldn't it be nice to have another one, right? That is a losing game, my friends. If that is the game we are playing We're only going to lose all the time. Okay. So just remember this one. If you notice that you have fallen into the trap of more is better, if you are playing the game of more, 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 whether it's like acquiring more, or maybe it's just keeping more, just remind yourself that is not a game that anybody can win. It's a slippery slope every single time. Next quote. This one is from one of my favorite authors. Uh, His name is Dr. Benjamin Hardy. And he has a really cool book, and it's called Slipstream Time Hacking. Such a cool book. So he says, in our world with limitless options, limitless books to read, limitless clothes to wear, limitless paths to take, it is extremely important to be picky. Excess is a suppressant to abundance. Access represents the broad path which most people travel with too many clothes in their closets and too many competing priorities. Paralysis by analysis is at an extreme. And can't you relate? Because I sure can. You know, at no time in history have we had more options. Think about Amazon, the everything store. There is like, you could go and buy a billion things on Amazon. If that is not a recipe for overwhelm, I don't know what is. You go to the grocery store and they have 500 varieties of cheese and, you know, 27 varieties of the potato chips from one manufacturer. How is anybody ever supposed to make a decision? 
Okay. So what we need to do and what this, what this quote is telling us is that we need to get picky. We need to be very picky because when we are not picky and when we just let everything in or we try to keep everything, we are blocking abundance. We are literally blocking the thing that we're kind of seeking, right? That's why we keep things because we feel like we want more. We want to have choices. We want to have options. We want to have the world at our fingertips. But what but, uh, Benjamin Hardy is telling us is that the exact opposite happens. And, um, you know, when you're not picky and when you indulge in excess, then you are suppressing your ability to, to be in abundance. Ooh. So that's kind of a hard one. It's so good. All right, next quote. This one is a quote by a philosopher named Seneca, lived, uh, I don't know, a couple thousand years ago. He said, it is not that we have a short time to live, but that we waste a lot of it. Oh my goodness. We are wasting our time. And can't you relate to this? Because I, again, I know that I can, right? We run around thinking, you know, living our lives and saying, I'm so busy. I wish I had another hour. I wish I had 25 hours in a day. But how much, how many times, how often do you find yourself like sucked down the rabbit hole of social media or just like wasting time procrastinating or just goofing off or, you know, telling yourself you need a break um, when you really could be putting that time to good use. Now, I don't want you to take this quote or these words and use this against yourself. Okay. This is not an opportunity to feel bad or, you know, to start hating on yourself and saying, Sarah says I'm wasting my life. That's not the point here. You know that. But I just want you to notice, you know, the next time you say, oh my gosh, I'm so busy, just remind yourself, I have so much time. I have so much time. How do I want to use my time better? Right? And see what happens. Next quote. This uh, is a quote by Robert A. Johnson, and he has a book that's called She, right? S-H-E, She. Understanding feminine psychology. And this is not necessarily about men versus women. Um, this is, there's the feminine aspect of, of everyone. We all have a feminine aspect to our personality, some of us more than others. And, you know, for me, I've really worked at cultivating the feminine aspect of myself. And I love this book, particularly this, um, this quote. This is such a good one. Okay. He says, there is a popular heresy abroad today, which states that if a little is good, more is better. Oh, if a little is good, more is better. Following this dictum creates a life which is never fulfilling. This is the whole, we can't win the game of more. Even when you are engaged in one rich experience, you are looking about for another. There is no contentment because future plans are always intruding on the present. Oh, I love this. And I also don't love it. I also kind of hate it, but, but I love it because it just reminds me, right? That constraints and letting go, um, this is, is so useful and results in so much, so much freedom, right? So let's just be careful. You know, how often have you noticed, have you caught yourself, you know, you're enjoying, you're having a great day and then, but you're like thinking, what should I do next? Or or how can I make this better? And when we do that, we're missing out on what's actually going on, right? If a little is good, more is not necessarily better. There is a point where more is worse. And think about where is that point and stop before you get there. Right? Then you can maximize your experience. Next quote, uh, another quote, Dan Sullivan and Benjamin Hardy. This book is called 10X is Easier Than 2X, another amazing book. He's, they say, nothing happens until after you commit. And it's only after you commit that you know what freedom feels like. As the popular saying goes, everything you want is on the opposite side of fear. Oh, I love this quote. I love this one so much because you cannot declutter until you have committed to decluttering. You can kind of play around, you can dabble, right? But if you really want to have that result, if you want that kitchen to be cleaned up, if you want to host that party or that family dinner, or if you want to have your closet not, you know, not stress you out when you wake up in the morning, you've got to commit. You've got to commit. And he says it's only 
after you commit that you know what freedom feels like. Oh, freedom is such a beautiful thing. So everything you want is on the opposite side of fear. That feels a little scary to me, obviously, but it's also really good news because if we can just get through that fear, like fear is kind of the, the, the bridge to the thing that we want. If you want the garage where you can park your car in it, but you're afraid you're going to need those things, or you're afraid that you're going to, you know, like feel so bad that you haven't unpacked those boxes, you know, over the last 10 years, whatever it is that you're afraid of, the thing that you want is through that fear, right? So the fear isn't a bad thing. You don't have to get rid of the fear. You don't have to wait until you're not afraid to get the thing you want. In fact, you have to do it when you are afraid because that is the only way through. So I love this one. All right. If you have time to consume, you have time to produce. Another quote on time. And um, this is from um, an account on Twitter called Visualize Value. Uh, love this account and they have lots of great visuals. But again, if you have time to consume, you have time to produce. If you have time to watch a movie or a show or scroll on social media, you have time to do. You have time to declutter. You have time for your hobby. You have time to, to do that thing that you have been putting off, right? And, and we talk about this in the core membership. We talk about producing first, right? In your day, ideally, you start with production and then later you consume, right? Consumption is like the reward. So don't start with the consumption of, you know, whatever it is, the, the media, the food, the, the social activity. When you start there, then you may not get around to the production. And as human beings, we need to produce. This is all, for all you creatives. If you're not producing, like part of you is really suffering. So make sure that you have that time and that you set that side up. That is, uh, that is a um, question of discipline and standards and habits uh, because it's not necessarily easy to do it. It's so much easier to be fed, right? to be entertained and consume. Um, but the result is that we, we end up feeling very unsatisfied if we're only consuming, right? We're going to get a stomach ache. If you go to the buffet and all you do is consume and you overeat, you're going to feel sick. Same thing with anything else in life. If we're over consuming um, and not producing, right? Not moving, not exercising, not, not creating, we're going to end up with a very unfulfilled life. So just be aware of this one and don't tell yourself you don't have the time. This is by Stephen Pressfield. This book is called The War of Art. This is an amazing book for anybody who, um, really anybody who is creative or who produces, Okay, so you might not consider yourself an artist, but maybe you have a business or maybe you have a job where you are coming up with ideas or strategy, right? That's all uh, covered in this really awesome book called The War of Art. Um, little book, really quick read, but full of amazing advice. Okay, so Stephen Pressfield says, are you paralyzed with fear? That's a good sign. Oh, there we have that again. Fear is good. Like self-doubt, fear is an indicator. And fear tells us what we have to do. Oh my gosh, I love this so much. Fear tells us what we have to do, right? So not only is that thing, is the thing we want on the other side of fear, like we read in that other quote, but fear is literally like the giant arrow pointing to the thing that you, you really need to do, right? If, if it wasn't important to you, you wouldn't really be afraid of it. You wouldn't be thinking about it. Um, you would be like, yeah, whatever, right? But if you're afraid of it, um, it is an indicator that that is something that's actually really important for you to do. So take that, um, take that for what it's worth and use that as an indication of what's actually really important to you. Quote here by Ryan Holiday from The Obstacle is the Way. He says, focus on the moment, not the monsters that may or may not be up ahead. Right? And this goes into the fear as well. We all have, you know, if you're, if, if you are having a hard time doing something and there's a lot of what ifs, or if you're kind of scared, if you're, if you have some doubt or some fear that is playing into your situation, that's like having monsters up ahead, right? That is like, oh my gosh, all of these things are probably going to come up, right? All of these, these potential mistakes are in my future. 
The thing is, frequently, we don't necessarily know what mistakes and what monsters lie ahead for us. We really don't. We think we do, but we are so often wrong. And, um, you know, whether we're right or we're wrong, it doesn't really change anything if we're thinking and we're looking out for the monsters. You know, we're looking out for the mistakes and the pitfalls. Just, and so Ryan Holiday says, focus on the moment. Just do the thing that you're supposed to do. What's the next right thing? Do that. And then if the monster shows up, then you can fight the monster. But maybe it doesn't show up. Or maybe a different one shows up and you need to do something different. Really, really important. Just focus in on the moment and don't worry about all the rest. All right. That's what I have for you today with this podcast. I hope you've enjoyed these little quotes. Let me know, uh, you know, if this is interesting and useful to you, I would love to hear about it. And also if you could chance, if you could leave a review for the podcast, that would be absolutely amazing. Reviews are like the most important way for people to find our podcast and they help us out so much. So if you can leave a review on YouTube or Spotify or Apple podcasts, that would mean the world to me. We'll see you next time, everyone. Take care. That's all we have for you today. If you enjoyed this podcast, would you leave us a review? It would really help us get the word out. To start your decluttering journey, go to thedeclutteringclub.com. That is the, T-H-E, decluttering club.com. We'll see you next time.